On July 3rd, Prime Minister Frondel Stewart, other leaders and specially invited guests, met in Port of Spain for the 34th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM. The moment was a special one, as it marked the 40th anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Chacaramas under the theme, 40 Years of Integration, Celebration and Renewal. Prime Minister of Barbados, Frandel Stewart, was among those leaders who not only paid tribute to past leaders, but noted the significant strides made by member states over the last four decades and beyond. Forty years ago, four distinguished heads of government of this region, summoned by the logic of history to be bold at that time, met here in Trinidad and Tobago and signed what the then Prime Minister of Guyana, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham, said should become known as the Treaty of Chagaramus. On that auspicious occasion, the host Prime Minister was, as is the case today, the distinguished Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, then the late Dr. Eric Eustace Williams. He, in his speech welcoming the great cloud of witnesses by whom he was compassed about, delivered the charge which he expected would guide the CARICOM project. He said on that occasion, and I quote, there can be no new dispensation, which does not mean the integration of the fragmented economies of the people of the Caribbean by the people of the Caribbean for the people of the Caribbean, unquote. Forty years later, we, another generation of Caribbean leaders, have come to Trinidad and Tobago to celebrate 40 years of CARICOM's existence, to reflect on battles lost and won, and to plan the way forward. According to Prime Minister Stewart, after 40 years, the region is stronger than ever. It cannot be denied that from time to time on our regional journey, we have faced challenges which have tended to make the achievement of our goals more difficult. But I contend that on any objective evaluation of CARICOM over the last 40 years, it would have to be conceded that the people of the Caribbean, whether English, French, Spanish or Dutch speaking are more closely knit today than at any other time in this region's history. Newly elected and re-elected leaders also spoke about the greatness of the region. In these worrisome times, where our islands and territories still feel the after effects of a staggering world recession, the march towards Caribbean single market and economy must be more certain. Ladies and gentlemen, the CARICOM region has had an interesting history in democracy. The wonder of democracy is that in a minute you will see us and in another moment you may not see us. As the Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. The signing of the founding treaty of Chagaramas on July 4th, 1973, was indeed a defining moment in the history of our region. And so today, 40 years later, we're meeting to reflect on our journey thus far, to celebrate the milestones and accomplishments which have punctuated that journey, and to contemplate our future as one nation, the Caribbean nation. On July 4th, CARICOM Day, the occasion became even more stirring as leaders from the four original signatory states, Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago, reenacted the signing ceremony.
In another symbolic gesture, other leaders also signed an agreement effectively recommitting member states to fostering unity. A highlight of the conference was a cultural extravaganza which showcased a potpourri of Caribbean talent and creativity. Prime Minister Stewart explained why July 4th is celebrated as CARICOM Day. If I remind you that after the collapse of the West Indies Federation in 1962, attempts were made to redeem the reputation of this region by attempts at a smaller federation in the Eastern Caribbean, the so-called Little A effort. Most of those negotiations took place in Barbados. And when it became clear to the then Premier of Barbados, uh, Mr. Errol Walton Barrow, that those negotiations were going nowhere, he broke them off and ended the attempt at a little late federation. On the 27th of June, 1965, Barrow wrote the then Premier of Guyana, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham, a letter inviting him to come to Barbados to discuss the possibility of establishing a Caribbean Free Trade Association. The 27th of June, 1965 was a Sunday, and Burnham traveled to Barbados the following Sunday, which would be Sunday, July the 4th, to have those discussions with the Premier of Barbados. Now you know why the date, 4th of July, is sanctified in our regional history. Because it was on that day in Barbados, in that meeting between Barrow and Burnham, that the decision was taken to establish a Caribbean Free Trade Association. Of course, the 4th of July is also the birthday of that distinguished Jamaican patriot, the late Norman Washington Manley, who did so much in his time to promote the integration of this region. The Prime Minister gave further insight into how CARICOM was formed. After Bower and Burnham agreed, they were to discover that the then head of government of Antigua, Ver Cornwall Bird, was similarly disposed. And therefore, in 1965, at Dickinson Bay in Antigua, the Corifta Agreement was formally signed. Two years would elapse and then at 
a conference held in Barbados in 1967. All of the other CARICOM member states, all the other member states uh, of this region, English-speaking region, committed themselves to this Caribbean Free Trade Association, and therefore, CARIFTA became an authentic and living reality. By 1972, Chagaramas, which had so much been a part of the history of Trinidad and Tobago, reclaimed, I seem to recall, if my history is not deceiving me, by the then leader of Trinidad and Tobago, the late Dr. Harry Williams, in an event which has gone down in history as the march in the rain. But at Chagaramas in 1972, Barrow Burnham, the late Dr. Eric Williams, and Michael Manley met and took the historic decision to affirm this region's maturity by committing themselves to the establishment of diplomatic relations with Cuba. The Prime Minister reflected on that significant moment in time. That was a historic step in itself and wrote Shagaramas further into the history of this region. One year later, it was here at Shagaramas that the same four Caribbean leaders, Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, Michael Norman Mandy, Lyndon Forbes, Samson Burnham, and Errol Walton Barrow met and signed the Treaty of Shagaramas. They had one simple mission, and it was to bring this region and its peoples more closely knit together. And as I said last evening, I need no persuasion at all that 40 years later, the people of this region are more closely united than at any other time in the history of the Caribbean. We have been colonials for much longer than we have been independent states. And rolling back the tide of history and the consciousness which that history uh, imposes will take a little time. But I do not think that as a region we have anything to be ashamed about. We have shown the world that we can come together, work together, and try to realize the dreams and aspirations of the people of this region. The 34th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community is now over. One thing is clear. Although the path to tomorrow may not be smooth, the people of the Caribbean remain strong, united, and resolved that together there are no mountains that are insurmountable. I know it's very easy if you're boldly wrapped to your people and tell them like me. One race, same place. One trip, same ship. So we, so we must push one common intention for a better life in the region. For we women and we children, that must be the ambition of the Caribbean man.